this hour. Fathers and brothers murdering daughters and sisters. He said, I believe in my heart I did the right thing. Killers with a twisted sense of honor and shame. They from Pakistan, and not speaking English to me, and not telling me nothing. Did their faith also lead them to kill? The reason he's giving is that you were a bad Muslim girl. A crime with roots in tribal lands. And now it's come here. Is there any doubt in your mind that these were honor killings? None, none at all. Murder in the family, honor killing in America. Reporting from New York, here's Megan Kelly. Honor, it is an ancient concept that has come to mean different things in different cultures. It has long played a part in American life. The Declaration of Independence concludes with the founders pledging to each other their lives, fortunes, and sacred honor. And to this day, the motto at West Point is duty, honor, country. For most Americans, honor has evolved into a personal code of patriotism, honesty, fair play, respect for others. But in parts of the world like Pakistan, Afghanistan, and many areas of the Middle East, some people see honor a bit differently. The concept there is less individual than tribal, and it sometimes leads husbands, fathers, and brothers to murder wives, daughters, and sisters for offenses like immodesty or refusing an arranged marriage. For in this kind of honor, a woman's life is worth far less than a man's sense of shame. The United Nations estimates that as many as 5,000 women are murdered in such honor killings each year. Tonight, you will see that this crime has come to America, and we are just beginning to grapple with how to confront it. We begin with a shocking recent case from Atlanta. Here's Jamie Colby. Somebody what? Guys. You're listening to the voice of 57-year-old Chowdhury Rashid. What happened on Utah Drive? Somebody died. Somebody died. Sir, who, who did? That somebody was Rashid's 25-year-old daughter, Sandila. Up until this 911 call just three weeks ago, Rashid seemed to be living an American immigrant success story. Chowdhury was born in Gujarat, Pakistan. After his wife died in childbirth, he came to America in 1990. Eleven years later, the two girls and two boys he had to leave behind with relatives joined him in Atlanta. He had opened his own pizza parlor and they worked with him. He married an American woman named Gina. They all settled into this middle-class neighborhood in Jonesboro. We were generally greeting each other with a hello, how are you, a smile, a wave. Veronda Luckett has lived down the street from the Rashid family for three years. Ever see the police there before? Never. Ever hear about any arguments? No. Detective Michael Christian of the Clayton County Police Department calls the Rashids very religious. What do you know about the father's religious practices? He was a very devout Muslim. I know that he prayed all five times during the day. So how did this immigrant success story take a bizarre and violent turn? Some believe that what happened in this six-bedroom colonial was an extreme variation on a theme as old as humanity itself, about a family that ventures off to a new world but can't let go of their old ways. Then again, as you'll see, others believe the crime committed here is just the latest warning of a new and dangerous ideology in America, radical Islam. Either way, there seems little doubt that Rashid's inability to assimilate left behind a corpse. Yes, could you please send some cops? Sandy was dead. Sandy was dead. The seeds of this tragedy were planted in 2002. That's when Rashid took Sandila, now called Sandy by her American friends, back to Pakistan's Punjab province for an arranged marriage to one of her cousins. Sandy had to leave her new husband in Pakistan because he couldn't get permission to enter the U.S. And a source close to Sandy told us it wasn't until April 2008, almost six years after their wedding day, when the couple finally reunited in Georgia. By that time, Sandy had changed. She'd acclimated to life in America. She was just a modern American woman. Sandy kicked her husband out of the house. He left for Chicago. She hired a divorce lawyer. Her father 
angry, fired her from the pizza place. So she got her own job at Walmart. She had wanted a divorce and her father was against it because he did not believe in divorce. She had recently told co-workers that she thought things were getting better around the house and that she thought everything would be okay. So Tuesday, July 1st, Sandy filed for divorce. That really pushed Rashid over the edge, says Malik Shahid of the Pakistan American Society of Atlanta. He met with the family the day after Sandy was killed. He said, I'm very depressed and I'm very upset. On Saturday night, July 5th, Rashid picked Sandy up from work at Walmart. There was some kind of argument, very strong argument. And after that, when he came home, and then he became more aggressive. At the house, everyone was asleep. Detective Christian says Rashid prepared to strangle his daughter with a bungee cord he kept in his trunk. He had taken a bungee cord out of the car, actually put it in his pocket so, he, so Sandy would not see the bungee cord. Police say Sandy went to her bedroom above the garage. Her dad followed. He strangled her, killed her. Then he'd gone down to the garage, burned the bungee cord, and then flushed it down the toilet. Rashid then woke up one of his sons. And told him, your sister is dead. At which point, he went and checked on Sandy. Could not revive her. Went and woke the other brother. Basically, the whole house awakened. Including Gina Rashid, Sandy's American stepmother, who drove down the street and made the first call to 911. I woke up, I heard a lot of hollering and screaming, and I just woke up. And I asked my family what's going on. They from Pakistan, they're not speaking English to me, they're not telling me nothing. Please send someone, please. It was minutes later that Rashid made his own call, the one we told you about earlier. What happened on Utah Drive? Somebody died. Somebody died. When officers arrived, they found Mr. Rashid, who was seated on the ground smoking. He was wearing a black and gold prayer hat of some type. He was barefoot, had been chain smoking. He would only repeat what he'd said to 911, my daughter is dead. But Christian says he confessed to killing her later at the police station. He told us that he had killed his daughter, that he did not want the family dishonored by a divorce. Rashid, who's been charged with murder, also said he is a Muslim and that divorce and extramarital affairs are against his religion and would disgrace the family. And that's why he killed his daughter. He said, I know that I will have to go to prison, but I believe in my heart I did the right thing. An honor killing and nothing more. I have no reason to even suspect anything else. But Malik and his group stress that despite what Rashid said about his religion, Islam was not to blame. This is this personal, his sickness, or his depression, or his family problem, his aggressiveness, or anything he did, he did to personal. This is not related with the Muslims or not related with the Islam. As you will see tonight, the question of what impels men to kill for honor is becoming as urgent to confront as the crime itself, because this was not the first honor killing in America, not even close. Coming up, an honor killing in St. Louis that was actually recorded on an FBI wiretap. You will hear that tape. And later in Rochester, New York, police say a brother stabbed his sister 11 times for being a bad Muslim girl. She survived and tells her story exclusively to Fox. But first, a New Year's car ride with their father ends in the murder of two teenage sisters just outside of Dallas after the break.